To science, knowledge only adds to the excitement and mystery and the awe of a flower. Evidence is evidence. It's public. Everybody can look at the evidence and assess it. And eventually, if there's an enough evidence, come to the same conclusion. The Chloe Sanctuary hopes to give you insight into the health and happiness of your companion parrots. We hope to help you build happy homes using reliable and proven tools. The best homes are built on a rock solid foundation. And the best foundation for a happy home is the bedrock of science. When we stand on the shoulders of giants, the scientists who have worked long and diligently to understand our companions, we can reach new heights of understanding. And understanding is the key to success I think treated, most of these birds have a good prognosis, and I would say in... What does avian veterinary medicine have to tell us about our feathered friends? How can the tools of behavior shaping make our homes happier for us and our companions? Shake. How can we deal with biting, screaming, or other misbehavior? What is it like to live among parrots? Let them roam around about you and share a life with them. Of the Chloe Sanctuary for Parrots and Cockatoos, a nonprofit charity dedicated to the empowerment of captive parrots and public awareness. Hi, I'm Don, the executive director of the Chloe Sanctuary and producer of Cockatude. I want to thank all of you for watching our videos. <laughs> Pippa, are you having fun? You want to get up on the shoulder there, girl? I've been trying to come up with a way to provide higher quality videos and also reward our patrons. So now we have a paid account at Vimeo where we can post high quality, high resolution episodes. Right? Tell them all about it. Tell them all about it. Our patrons are the ones who are helping us pay for this upgrade, so only patrons will be able to see our new full episodes. Our YouTube videos will be about half as long as they were before. Pippa, the gang, and I would like to invite you to become a patron at patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary. Just a single dollar an episode, we do two a month, will get you full access to these enhanced episodes. Right, Pippa? Yeah, Pippa agrees. Yeah. Pippa's news, Peach's training tips, and Cecil's cool stuff found will only be on these new enhanced videos. Pippa wants you to know that she works very hard coming up with all the things for her segment and she wants you to see them. She hopes you will join us on Patreon. Our patrons deserve the best and we're hoping to give that to them with this new video platform. You can check out an example of the higher quality by going to chloesanctuary.org and clicking on the cockatude tab on the top of the page. I also plan to upload video shorts on weeks where we don't do a new episode. There'll be lots of stuff inside the aviary, that kind of thing. Right, Pippa? Some behind the scenes stuff around here too, right? Beak trimming and stuff like that. Yeah, little stuff. So fly out to patreon.com slash Chloe Sanctuary and join right now. We hope to see you there for the upcoming episode. Don't we, Pippa? Yeah, we do, don't we? Razu and PayPal donors, you get access too, as long as you meet that minimum amount per year of $24. Without these patrons giving us of their hard-earned cash, we couldn't continue doing this podcast. Hi, and welcome to Cockatude, Cockatoos with Attitude. Episode 88, Mating Behaviors. 
Well, something we definitely don't want from our birds is mating behavior. The problem with mating behavior is that um, although they're not violent by nature, although they are peaceful creatures, they will protect their mates. And I told the story before, but quickly, there was a guy up in Los Angeles. He was attacked by a couple of villains who were trying to steal his stuff in his home. And his macaw came right down, popped one of the eyes of the assailants out. And in the wild, that's what they will do to protect their mate. Um, that doesn't happen very often, but what happens is if there's no available mates, and someone has a mate that dies after 10 or 20 days, it'll start looking for another mate. And if there's nobody to look for, it might try to edge its way in on somebody else. Hi, Peach. And that's when the situation has been seen. Uh, it has been noted by biologists. Um, I've even seen it myself. But let me introduce everybody here first. We got Pippa. Pip, Pip, Pippa. Pip, Pip, Pip. And Lucy, oh, you want to come up, Lucy? You want to come sit up by me? You want to sit up here, Lucy? You can if you want to. You don't have to. Sit up here? Okay. All right, loose figures. I'm going to stretch my legs out so Pippa has a place to go besides just that short little spot. Right? Hey, Pippa. And Lucy and Pippa, we have Sugar Bird. Sugar the Bird. Sugar the Bird. Lorelei. We have Coco. Peaches, where do you want to go, Peaches? She got her foot up. She wants to go somewhere. Yeah. Hey, Peach. Hey, Peach. I know you want to go somewhere. We have Coco and Salamander. Salamander bird. Salamander bird. Salamander bird. You were so noisy when you got in here. Having a good time, kicking it all up. Now you're just sitting back there quietly. What's up, Mander? Mander bird. Now yeah, he's looking around. You're a good boy, Mander. You're a good bird, Mander. So what we normally see in that when when a human becomes mated to a, a bird is that the bird will start attacking that person's friends. Or you'll have a friend come in and they're, they're like rushing over to hug you or something, and your bird will turn around and bite you. They're warning you, this person's a danger to your relationship with them. So you have to be careful. It's especially, it's an especial problem if you have a uh, an Amazon, okay? Or something, a small bird that flies around like a Senegal. Um, you really don't want a, a cruise missile going after one of your friends, okay? So, when you're dealing with, with birds, you need to, and you'll see me break this rule, but I know what I'm doing, okay? And I know the birds I'm working with, and we have our own little relationships. So... If you've seen any of our videos out in the aviary, uh, I must be doing something right. And when I say that, I'm following the rules that I was taught by Dr. Susan Friedman when I learned applied behavior analysis from her. Okay? So, I look at a situation, I analyze it, and I decide how I'm going to work with a bird in, in particular situations. I'm not just flying by the seat of my pants. And when you get older, you don't have much in the seat of your pants. I'll tell you, as you get... <laughs> I'm 64. As you get older, you kind of lose it back there, okay? So I don't want to fly by the seat of my pants because I don't have much back there. So what I do is I analyze it. Uh, sometimes I do a lot of this quickly in my head, but sometimes I have to write it down and use the formulas to figure out what's the best procedure to work with each bird. Um... When you're first working with these guys, you want to stick to the basic rules, okay? And those rules are like this. Don't pet the bird below the neck. 
Don't pet your bird on the beak. Don't pet your bird for more than five minutes. If you're petting your bird, no matter whether you're petting it just on the head, if it's a female and it starts shaking, stop. Don't discourage the bird from doing it. Just don't give any attention to the bird while it's doing that. Okay? Because if you have mating behaviors, you do not want to encourage them. If you're petting a male, it can happen with some females too. I've seen it on both sides. So you can take this as generally male, generally female when I say that. If you're petting a bird on the head and you see that tail fan out, it's getting sexually aroused, so you need to back off. Okay. Roman's the best one for that. Uh, he comes out of his cage two or three times a day, and I pet him. And if I see that tail flare, I will stop petting him and just talk to him. Because if I don't, he's going to start wanting to regurgitate his food for me. So initially, you want to make sure that you're always petting, just the head, never for more than five minutes at a time, not too much cuddling, okay? Oh, my bird likes to get right up under my chin. Careful with that, okay? If you're encouraging nesting behavior, you can get a mated bird. And I quite often hear people say, oh, that bird hates me, loves my husband, hates me. No. That bird is mated to your husband because your husband did improper things with the bird and formed a mated bond. Now, occasionally a bird will form a bond without that. It will just decide that you're it. Okay? You didn't do anything. That's happened to me. Causes like that. I did not. Petted her. Followed all the rules with cause. And yet she totally got bonded to me. And I didn't do anything to create that. At least nothing I could tell. Nothing by the book. Um, hard to say there. But, so, stick to those basic rules. Now, other things with mating behavior. Hi, Lorelei. Pippa, don't bother Lorelei. Don't you bother Lorelei now. You be nice. 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 You be nice to her. That's better. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, it's a good girl. Yeah, that's a good pip. Good pip. Good pip. It's more important to reward the positive behavior than it is to tell her no, okay? So, when she stopped looking at Lorelei, and that's important because when she's staring at her, that's when Lorelei gets scared. And you know. the second she stopped looking, I started rewarding that positive behavior. So some people will say you never give your bird a box to nest in. You can give them boxes to nest in. It's okay. In some cases, they need to have them. It depends on the situation. It's hard to decide when to do it. But um, if they start getting territorial, as in they start sitting in the box all the time, and they're tearing up paper, and that's all they want to do, and you, you can't get them, they don't want to come out. Okay, You can get them to come out, but they don't want to, then you probably need to take the box away. If they have a toy, and they start treating that toy like it's a mate, a male will get up against the uh, get up against it and flare their tail, or a female will back into a toy, take the toy out, put a different toy in there, uh, pick something that's going to be hard for them to do that with. Okay, um, there are some toys that are like, big and fat uh, that are made of braided palm and that kind of thing, preening toys that just aren't uh -huh. good for that kind of behavior. Put a different kind of toy in there. Salamander was doing that, and he was actually rubbing himself against the chain on these things. So I had to take those toys away and put different toys, which I had to buy, um, and to put different toys in his cage until he stopped that behavior. And now he can be around them again. Okay? It's not, they're not set in stone. They're smart animals. They're going to make changes. They're going to uh, react to situations. 
And if you take something away for a while, you can generally work it back in. Just watch your watch what's going on when you're doing it. Hi, Pippa. Watch what you're doing. Watch what they're doing. And see what happens. And adjust accordingly. Uh, applied behavior analysis. You're doing that with a formula. Okay? You have a formula to make sure that you're covering all the bases and you're seeing things clearly because it's hard for us to see. Take a chance. If you, if you look at our show notes, and I always put it down at the bottom, there's two short videos. They're only a couple of minutes each, and you should watch them if you haven't watched them yet. One's a whodunit. You're supposed to figure out who, who where the murderer is. And the other one's a basketball video. Okay, both of them are short. If you watch those two videos and you still believe that you see the world the way it really is, then you're hopeless, okay? You're absolutely hopeless, and you should go shoot yourself with a water pistol. Right in the head, with a water pistol, right? Don't use a real gun, just a water pistol. Because we do not see the world. Humans were not. They did not evolve to see the world the way it is. They evolved to see the world in such a way so they could survive. Okay? Which is pretty much... Hi, Pepe, are you going to fly? Want to go see Steve? You will visit Steve? No? Not like to see me? Got to step in the poop first, though, right? So you can get it on me? Yeah. Yep. You got it on your foot. I see it. Most of them are smart enough not to step in poop, but she's been, you know, she's a little touched because she had the lead in her that had to be surgically removed, so. If you have an issue with a toy like that, you need to take it out. You have to make sure that nobody in your family is petting these birds in the middle of the neck. I know, I personally know a couple of people. One of them, anytime this person runs into a bird, they don't know. They start handling them in ways that are improper, and you can see the birds starting to sexually respond. Okay? You don't want to do that. Another issue is with mating behavior. Let's jump to something completely different just to give you a fresh for a moment of your mind off of that and onto something else. Some people say, well, my bird is lonely. I'm going to get him a companion. Well, if you get them a Let's say if you get a male, a female, um, and you put them in the same cage, we have good evidence that that's, and it's happened many times, the male will often kill the female. And um, just imagine in your mind somebody you wouldn't want to live with, you absolutely wouldn't want to live with, and imagine them, you being thrown. Imagine being thrown into a jail cell with that person. And now you're going to have to live with them for the rest of your life. What? Would you do it? Would you possibly strangle that person to death? Well, this is kind of what it's like, okay? They do choose their mates in the wild. They choose their mates in captivity as well. So don't make that choice for them. Very good, Pippa. Very good. Pip, Pip, Pippa. Beautiful girl. Pip, 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 Pip. pip. Coco thinks you're nuts, but I think you're beautiful. Nice tail flash over there, kid. Nice tail flash, sugar. She still has the best tail flashes. Peaches is an amazing personality. Her daily maintenance requires dedication and mindfulness. She requires two forms of medicine, seven course meals, and effort to entice her to eat. Extensive preening in every day, special tools to trim nails, constant attention to her vocalizations, daily walks, and twice yearly checkups due to the possibility of impacted feather follicles and the nature of her spinal injuries. It seems a common misconception among the general public that parrots are like toys in a toy box. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are complex creatures. Recently, scientific studies have shown them to be at least as intelligent as chimpanzees. Every captive parrot needs special humans who will dedicate themselves to understanding them, those who know their species as it lives in the wild. 
special people that understand their social, mental, and physical needs. They need to be understood for what they are, and not as merely human companions, as circus performers to bring smiles. Peaches needs all this and more. She is our special girl. Will you help us care for Peaches? Please make a donation today at our website, chloesanctuary.org. That's spelled C-H-L-O-E-S-A-N-C-T-U-A-R-Y dot O-R-G. As a special thank you for your donation, we will joyfully send you a postcard with Peach's happy face. So, if you even if you get them and bring another male into the environment, say if you have a male, you bring in another male. You may have territorial disputes. That's just what you need, uh-huh. right? Um, you can see it with Bob when I have him in here, which I'm still working on trying to get him back in here. But his prolapse has put him into a bad mental space. So he'll get down uh-huh. here. He he considers this little area his territory when he's in this room. If anybody goes down there, and speaking of anybody, um, Cecil, who has actually two personalities, he's either Dr. Cecil Jekyll, or he's Mr. Cecil Hyde, okay? So he'll be sitting on my lap as Cecil Jekyll, and then he'll get over here as Cecil Hyde, and he knows that Bob doesn't want him down there. He knows, I mean, you can tell that he knows this. He goes down there to irritate Bob, and then Bob freaks out. Okay, Bob's defending his territory, and that's a fight situation, so I just pick up Cecil and plop him over here. And then Cecil will work his way back, and we go through this constantly. Um, so bringing another bird into the situation is not in itself going to help. What helps with these is, is knowing these birds, studying and learning, getting the manual of parrot behavior, Reading the sections on mating behavior there. Learn. Oops. Do I have anything to wipe that up with? Normally I would. Let's see. I'm sorry. You want to move for just a second? I got to lean over. I have paper towels in here, but darn it, I know where they are. I. There we go. Got it. Um, come on. You had to knit me. It shouldn't hurt me, but you had to knit me to tell you, tell me I did not want to get off your stomach. Is that what you're doing? Hey, I'm losing weight. I've lost 23 pounds. Pretty soon there won't be a place to sit. She doesn't believe me. I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. Hi, Peach. Hi, Peach. Rawr, yourself. Rawr. Rawr. You gonna fly? Ah, oh, that was the bounce off Steve Jobs. Right. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Pretty good flight there, kid. Better control. At least he didn't end up hanging on his head this time. I'm not sure what Steve would say if he was around and you were flying into his face, but... I think this one has decided she's made it to me, too, and I've been careful with her, so who knows. I like to say I'm poly polyamorous. Right? Poly polyamorous? Only want a cracker? No. Polly, Polly, the only Polly in this place that wants a cracker is him. Well, actually, him and Sugar. Sugar was a junk food junkie, and so was he. So, Right, Sal? You gonna take off, Peach? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go, Peach? Where are you gonna go, Peach? Okay, in this room, who's mated to me? She's not. Although, she's starting to act a little bit like it. Peaches has made it to me. Sugar has made it to me. 
Lorelei is not. Coco is not. Right? Um, the reason that that Peaches has made it to me is because she cannot, because of the six fused vertebrae in her neck, she cannot turn around to preen herself, so I have to preen her. If you're touching the tail section of a bird, that's the biggest no-no in the world when it comes to causing a bird to mate to you. Uh, no choice with her. Gotta do it. So, Otherwise, she gets impacted feathers, and that can kill her. So, Already had two surgeries, haven't you, baby? Yeah, and that's with me working on it. And the reason sugar is made it to me is because when she got here, she was a total mess. She was a mutilator. She didn't have many feathers on her body. Uh -huh. she, she was a mess. I'll see if I can dig up one of those pictures. I always seem to manage to bury them in the 22,000 pictures we have. But she... I had to put her in collars for a long time, and I had to give her different doses of medicine. It took two and a half years to figure it all out. And in that process, she got a lot of special care. And because I was paying so much attention to her, she got made it to me. So. But it's worked out. I mean, you can, you can deal with it. It's, it's easier to deal with birds that aren't mated to you, but... Um, as long as when she comes down to get her beak petted, she gets it petted for at least a few minutes, she's okay. Um, as long as she gets attention, she, when she tries to call my attention, I give it to her, she's all right. Bobaloo? Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. <coughs> Kisses, Bob. It says, good boy, Babalu. I have seen the joy in Babalu's eyes now that he has a new life with me as his companion. To see Babalu love and trust again is worth the effort of a lifetime. But once again, Bob is heading toward the pain of separation. Good boy. It says. It says. Good boy. My heart nearly broke the day I discovered that he was heading toward a cloacal prolapse, that his life will be cut short. To find love and acceptance and then have it stolen away from you by failing health is too much to bear. We can slow the progress of his failing health, but we can't stop it. He will need several surgeries, and eventually, Babalu will die. We want to give him the best possible life until that day. Hello, Bob. Hello, Bob. Babalu. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. Bob's a good boy. Bob's a good bird. His surgeries will become progressively more expensive over time. Won't you please lend Babalu a hand and donate to his medical fund today? Our donation button is on our webpage at www.chloesanctuary.org. Just be sure to say, for Bob, in the notes when you donate. <laughs> We welcome your feedback on our videos. We look forward to your insights, tips, questions, stories, and pictures. You can email us at cockatude at chloesanctuary.org, reach us on Twitter at sign Chloe Sanctuary, and join with us on our Facebook Chloe Sanctuary page. The science knowledge only adds to the excitement, the mystery, and the awe of a flower.